Access device. Then we have apply security group tax SGT as the ingress of the tra traffic path. Then we'll verify the egress filtering on the controller. So that's first to configure our Cisco eyes. We navigate first administration system settings. We'll first verify allow TLS 1.0 is enabled in this lab. Then we'll go ahead to verify the TrustSec overview. And in the prepare, we'll set up the TrustSec AAA server. As this lab, you're seeing ICE-A is our AAA server. The TrustSec AAA server are a list of radio servers that will be used by the TrustSec Capable Network Access Device NAD to obtain TrustSec environment data and policy. This list can be populated with multiple servers in a distributed ICE development. As you see here, we only have one standalone ICE development. From this AAA page, We'll verify that ICE has been configured with a Cisco TrustSec AAA server named S-A and with the IP address 10.8.25.155. The ICE communicates with network devices for many tasks in the classification phase. Network devices query ICE to authenticate and authorize users and devices. For enforcement, the enforcement device queries ICE to retrieve the access policy and keeps its policy table up to date. In next step, we will navigate to network device. We will find our controller. We have configured the IPs for the network uh, device of the controller and readers the shared secret, SMP settings. Scroll down here to advanced trust sec settings. We'll check advanced trust, trust sec settings checkbox. We'll check use device ID for TrustSec identification. Let's type in the password. Under device authentication setting, we'll select use device ID for TrustSec identification. Keep scrolling down in TrustSec notification and updates. We'll check send configuration changes to device use COA and we'll send from the trust uh, ice A AAA server. Let's test connection. Connection is OK. If you don't want to enable Cisco ICE to access your network devices, over SSH, you can create a static IP to SGT mappings on the device with the CLI instead. Next, keep scrolling down. Under that device configuration development, we'll check includes this device when deploying security group tag mapping updates and enter credentials needed to log in. In the end, save the configuration. Next, let's roll back to work centers, go to overview and the settings. 
In the general trust stack settings, we will examine the different settings available. Let's keep on default. In the next, we will create trust stack components. Let's go back to work centers and the overview. We are defining our security groups. Check development servers. We are rename as employee servers. Click save. Let's go back to work centers. Click overview. Click Network Device Authorization Policy URL. You will navigate to Network Device Authorization. We will insert a new rule. The rule name will be Network Device. Condition is device type equals to our wireless device. We'll select TrustSec device. Let's click it down. Then we edit the default rule. For no match, we'll make them as unknown device. Click Save. The next, we'll go back to work centers under overview. We will create some SG ACLs. Let's add one. The name will be Restrict Employment Server Service. Is the to restrict traffic from employee server. We keep IPv4 and we first will permit ICMP and we deny TCP from source HTTP and we deny TCPS source equals 443 HTTPS and we permit all IP traffic. Click save. Let's go back to work center and overview. We are assigned SGS ACL to a cell within the matrix. On the matrix, we give a minute to load up. It is for the policy informant within the trust stack. Domain is represented by a permission matrix with the source security group members on one axis and destination security group numbers on the other. So each cell in this body of matrix can contain an ordered list of SGACL, which specifies the permissions that should be applied to packets originating from the source column to the destination security group. Well, Pick it up a contractor to the employment server. Click the pencil. We will select restrict the employment server. Keep the fetch uh, final catch all rule none. And then we'll click save. In the next step, we'll add a static IP to SGT mapping for the corporate server. We'll select the components tab from the toolbar and select IP SGT static mapping. We we'll click add. We we'll put our server name. Sorry, it is server IP. 
and we'll select SGT to employee servers. We'll send to S XP domain as default. The Pori server will be all trust devices save. In the next, we'll be configuring the trust stack on Cisco 9800 controller. Navigator config triple E server. We already did server, which is our Cisco eyes and the servers groups. And the triple A method list, I would define a authorization method. We'll put a name ice authorize. Choose a type as network, group as a group, and pick it up our server group, click say apply. Go back to server, we defined our pack key. Let's click update. The next, we'll find out the policy that's related to our WLAN. Under CDS policy, we'll check inline tagging and SG ACL enforcement. Click update. In next, we'll configure our trust stack. Click modify CDS credentials, typing our CDS password. And the CDS authorization list, select ICE authorization as AAA methods. Click apply. In the next, we'll examine how the trust stack is connected to our Cisco ICE. Monitor trust stack. You will see the current status is complete and status successful. At the same time, we can go back to the ICE and under operation live logs, we'll see the CDS request is as a passed. Finally, we'll go to work center and the trust stack and the components. We navigate to ICE, uh, ICE IP SGD static mapping, check the static mapping and check click deploy and we deploy it to a 9800 controller click apply okay deployment is finished let's go back to our controller on the trust stack we have received all the security tag group Group 12 is the employee servers, has been modified as employee server, group name. We already have the static mapping, is from CRL. In the final step, we'll go back to ICE and the policy, policy set, expand authorization policy. First rule is to classify the demo group two in the AD for permits. We'll make it as a contractor for security group and employee in demo group one AD group. We'll make it employee. Click save. Before we can test, we'll go back to the ICE client side. We'll first um, tell you because of a restriction on the Cisco 9800, we'll make a reverse direction um, in the matrix. So let's find source from this employee server to the contract. We'll make the SGL for restriction.
Wi-Fi. Logging to demo user two as a contractor. We have successful logging as contractor. Now let's take a look at our operational logs. Operational logs for demo user two is assigned with contractor security group. We will keep refreshing the page to uh, open uh, the demo server web page. This is not able to open. And uh, we'll do a ping to the employment server. It is uh, pingable according to our uh, ACL. For the SG ACL, we defined allow ping, but it did not the web. Let's navigate to our um, controller, monitor the trust stack. We have seen the role based ACL from demo user, uh, demo, demo server to, uh, to the user contractor who have hit with the denied uh, ACL um, for 85 packets. And is, is the same as what we defined in the uh, matrix.